Hello everybody out there in YouTube land, and welcome to DC Fans United. So today I went on another one of my walks and comic book reads and brought along The Immortal Men, number one, in addition to some other books. But this is the one I'm doing a review on right now, so I had to walk around quite a bit to find a spot that was decent enough to do this review in. Everywhere was either too noisy, it was too close to the road, so there was car noise, it was too close to the river, so there was river noise, and on and on, but I finally found a pretty good spot, so if you hear birds chirping, that should probably be the only noise. So, The Immortal Man number one. I am so conflicted about this book, it's really hard to do a review on. Um, boy, it's one of those things, it sets up a world and a universe and introduces a bunch of characters that I like. I like all that stuff, but a lot of what it introduces is like already a foregone thing. And you'll see what I mean when I start to go through it. So well, this is the cover. It's a pretty cool cover. It's by Jim Lee. I actually kind of find all these characters intriguing. So let's see. I'm trying to remember. Oh, so this guy I think is actually named Ghost Fist, as crazy a name as that is. This one's named Timber. She's pretty cool. This one is named Stray, and this guy's named Reload. So they, those are the immortal men, even though some of them are female. <laughs> and because it's one of the number one New Age of Heroes books, it's got the fold-out poster. So we see Damage and Silencer and Sideways there. So the completed poster probably looks pretty cool. So the art on this is by Jim Lee, um, and this... Tinian is the writer, and then Alex Sinclair is the colorist. And I think I've talked about him pretty recently. He's a really good colorist. So the way this starts out is with this um, young man. I guess he's a teenager still. But anyways, he's having a dream, and it's a dream he's had a lot of times. And it feels real to him. Uh, his name's Caden. But he's had this dream lots and lots of times. And... In his dream, he's being attacked by all these, you know, scary things. And then all of a sudden, it's all good. Because he comes to this place known as the campus. And we see the character there. So I actually thought the art on this was really good. on the, Especially on this page. I saw this in the preview comic. And that's when I wanted to get it. I think it looks really neat. The problem is, this campus, as far as I know, this is the only time you see it. In a little bit here, you'll find out why. So anyways, he's dreaming about this place, and he's dreamed about it lots and lots of times. So then we come to reality, and he's passed out, and he's on the floor of a train station. And he wakes up, and then he sees someone that he thinks he's seen before, and he's still there on the ground. So then it jumps ahead, and he's talking to his therapist because he's had these sorts of dreams and things lots of times before. And he says whenever he touches someone, he gets like a moment of their memory or an impression from them. It's kind of strange. Oh, and he mentions his friend's boyfriend. Like, he doesn't say the guy's name. He mentions my friend... I think he says his friend's name. Yeah, my friend Brandon plays Call of Duty with his boyfriend. And that happens again later, where he says his friend's boyfriend, so... How about you just say the guy's name like you would in real life? Oh, you want to bring up the fact that there's there's gay gay people exist. I, I forgot. <laughs> so it's 2018. you got to have a gay character. Or at least mention that someone's gay. So I don't even mind. You know, it's fine have gay people. I follow Batwoman. I think she's cool. I think Midnighter's cool. What I don't like is dumb writing and dialogue that doesn't sound the way people would talk. You wouldn't say... You know, Brandon likes to play Call of Duty with his boyfriend. You'd say Brandon likes to play Call of Duty with Jim, or you wouldn't even say it like that. You'd say Jim likes to play it. Anyway, whole tangent isn't really detract from the comic at all. Um, and as you, you know, you can judge for yourself on the art whether you like it or not. So his dad, this Caden guy, his family is really rich too. Um, those are his parents there. So his mom. He asks to go to a party, and she says, you know, just be careful. <laughs> so this is what we find out. So this whole cool, beautiful new universe that we were just introduced to, it's been destroyed. That's the pyramid there, so the campus. 
It's all wrecked. And this bad guy's killing people. You can actually see there's all these impaled skeletons. So what these are, are immortal men. The so-called immortal men have all been killed. There's two houses of immortal men. Um, I forget what they're called. It says it here somewhere. But anyways, they're at war with each other. And they've been at war for a really long time. And basically, the one house has killed all of them except for these four immortal men. So I guess since I skipped to the front, let me get back where we were. So I don't know. It's just kind of like, why are you going to... Why are you going to introduce something so cool and then just throw it away right away? So my take on this book is it's it's okay, but I would rather read one that takes place like five years before this, maybe when this war was going on before it got to its conclusion. This book's taking place after this epic war. Whatever. I don't know. Maybe that's already happened in the comics. If you know about it, let me know down in the comments. So this art here, this is a bad guy. I forget... Let's see, he's called The Hunt. He's just called The Hunt. So all the characters have kind of dumb names, but it's okay. Anyways, I, I'm focusing on this guy because he's really good, uh, the way he's drawn. This is some good Jim Lee art like you would have seen probably on Image 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. So, very good art in this issue. Oh, and nothing takes you out of it like Munchkin collectible card game. <laughs> Okay, so this is the boss of the bad guys. Um, she's called the Infinite Woman. And basically she's just telling them that you did a good job, but we got to finish killing off the last of them. And then the Joker who laughs shows up. So the Immortal Men were apparently introduced in the Dark Knights comics. Uh, Dark Knights The Forge, I think. But I haven't read that one. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to go back and read it, though, because I'm kind of interested in the Immortal Men. Uh, but anyways, the Joker that laughs talks to her a bit, and he's talking about how he didn't know for the longest time that there were Immortal Men, and that they were behind the scenes shaping everything, and that how he thinks the Immortal Men should rise to power, and that it's the rightful place, and that he's going to help them do that. So even the bad ones are known as Immortal Men. There's two factions of Immortal Men, although now they're pretty much extinct because they massacred each other. So then we're introduced to, I, I'm pretty sure his name's Ghost Fist. They only say his name one time, but I, the way he looks is really cool to me. And he's got electric, electricity powers. So there were a couple civilians there that were in their way, so they had to, you know, he, he just stunned them, he didn't kill them. But they couldn't see what's happening either. And yeah, it says there, Ghost Fist. So his name's Ghost Fist. So these are the immortal men here, and they are pretty sure they're looking for that boy that we saw at the beginning. That guy, Caden. So, oh, and this is right after the battle. So they just t left that battle, so they're having a little conflict. Um, Timber is really mad. She's like, why did you leave? And he says the immortal man, who's like the leader of all of them, told him that if they were losing the battle, that he should do that. So that's why he did. And we're back to Caden. He's on his way to school on the subway, and he sees that guy again. So, this is what the immortal man looks like, by the way. So he's like, I gotta go talk to that guy. I keep seeing him. He must know. And he runs up, and he catches up to him, and he says, Excuse me, sir, is it real? What I saw? What I dreamed? You must know. I, I sound crazy, but please tell me, is the campus real? And then... It's a trap! as Admiral, Admiral Akbar would say. So it turns out this immortal man was actually an illusion. All these guys turn into zombie kind of monster things. See, he is just a hologram. So then the infinite lady's talking to him, and she's like, Yep, it's all true, but I found you before the good guys did, and the campus is destroyed. You're never going to fulfill your destiny. And then all these monsters start attacking. So this is one thing I didn't like about the comic, too, is just these monsters are... Just really cliche, generic looking enemies, like, uh, I don't know, it's overused because once they, um, you know, they fight and they get killed because the immortal men show up just in time to save Caden. You know, it's just like another battle with generic monsters. Is, the stakes aren't really there for me, like I don't care if a monster, <laughs> I don't know if it's 
racist against monsters, but I don't really care if the monsters die. It's not like they're fighting. See what I'm saying? If, the, if they showed the battle with the two factions of immortal men, that'd be really high stakes. It's even more high stakes than normal humans because they're, you know, they, they could live forever, essentially. They don't die of old age, so for them to die in battle is just such a waste. All right, so that's how the issue ends. I really had a lot to say about it, I guess. This video went kind of longer than it probably had to. Uh, the last panel, though, is really cool. And I do like the, the little team, the four-person team, I think looks neat. So there's a couple extra pages that are just ads. A lot of these New Age of Heroes books are like that. Wow, that's a lot of pages of ads. But the DC figures, since it's $2.99 instead of $3.99 or 5 they can get away with that. So that's the Immortal Men number one. I liked it enough that I'm going to read issue two and I'll review issue two. I mean, I bought it, so I may as well, but I don't know. It's like there's a lot there that is almost squandered. You know, the potential for greatness isn't quite reached. So uh, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. It's always great for you guys to check out my videos. Once we get up to a thousand subscribers, I've got all kinds of stuff planned, special videos, a contest, um, and a special announcement. So look for more reviews. Pretty much shooting to do a review or at least a video of some kind every day, at the very least every other day. So that's all for now. Um, be sure and subscribe if you aren't subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. And as always, thank you for watching and being a part of DC Fans United.